Hey, what's new and exciting fellow server experts and enthusiasts? Today I've got another overview video of this Supermicro high density rack mount server. Thanks for coming by to learn about this server. Now let's jump right into it. This is the Supermicro Super Server 6027TR-HTQRF. It's a four node, two unit rack mount server packing a lot of punch. Considering the server is almost 10 years old, it's still surprisingly powerful and affordable, albeit a little bit hard to find on the used market. But that's probably due to how reliable the server is, and it's probably still in use in a lot of data centers. Starting off on the front of the system, there are 12 3.5 inch SATA 3 drive bays, three for each of the four nodes, including support for RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. Each node has a power button and a UID or unit identification button. That's there so you can find the node in the back of the rack. In case you had a rack full of these things, that might be pretty useful. There are four system fans behind the drive bays, which are not hot pluggable, as you can see here. On the back of the system, there are two hot swappable 1620 watt power supplies and access to the four nodes, which are relatively easy to move by pressing in the two metal tabs and pulling on the finger loops. Now let's take a closer look at the nodes. Each node is a dual socket server supporting LGA 2011, Intel Xeon E5 2600 version one or version two with a BIOS update. Once you move the fan shroud, you can see there are eight DIMM slots with support for up to 512 gigabytes of ECC load reduced DDR3 DIMMs or 256 gigs of standard ECC registered DIMMs. Moving to the back of the node, there's a single low profile PCIe Gen 3 X16 slot. However, it's not the only PCI slot. There are two X8 slots behind it, as well as a mezzanine style X16 slot near the front of the node. Other connections inside the node include the TPM header, a single USB port, and one more SATA 3 connector. As you can see, there's not a lot of room in each node for expansion. However, what it lacks in expandability, it makes up for in built-in connectivity. Each node in the system has dual gigabit ethernet ports, a dedicated IPMI LAN port, as well as one QSFP QDR port for 40 gig InfiniBand connections. There's also a VGA for the onboard graphics, as well as a serial port and two USB 2.0 ports. Now I'll take you back into the server room and start it up See if you can hear it. This system has the potential to be highly dense with up to two terabytes of memory, 176 processing cores in only two rack units. This system can really hit its stride in applications such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, computational fluid dynamic simulations, banking, trading, and in ISP situations where a 40 gig InfiniBand or fiber connection may actually be important for con connectivity to the node. If you made it this far into the video, thank you. I really appreciate your interest and it's what keeps me motivated to make more of these server videos and maybe because I never had videos like this to look to when I was learning about servers. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you didn't, well, you know what to do. If you have anything to add or any comments or questions, drop a line down below the video. I'm happy to respond back to you. Until the next video, I hope you have a great day. Okay, bye.